like sports pro people or other people that are in whole other states and things of that nature. And both you and Kelly have mentioned the whole gentrification thing. And I know that down here we've been having prices rise. Like recently we've had one bedrooms that are going for um, anywhere from a Eleven hundred to sixteen hundred dollars, and we're complaining about it. Now I understand that in New York, y'all are glad to pay that kind of rent because y'all might pay sixteen hundred for what we would consider a closet. <laughs> um, you well, have no idea. I live in a co-op, so I'm a little bit more blessed than other people. Um, so it's fairly, fairly cheap because I'm just paying maintenance. Um, so you know. People are like, oh, don't you want to move to a smaller apartment because I live in a bigger apartment and I live by myself. And um, probably should not have said that <laughs> on a podcast with such a live audience. But um, I, I live by myself. So people are like, oh, don't you want to move? And I'm like, no, I don't want to lose the space. Like, you will literally have to take my corpse out of this apartment. <laughs> I, will, I will not leave. Where am I going to go? Like, I have friends who pay, you know, like, I don't pay electricity because I live in a co-op. And my friends are like, oh, yeah, I have to pay Con Ed. I'm like, Con Ed? What is that? <laughs> They're like, yo, I have to pay for for heat. I have to pay for hot water. I have to pay for the lights to come on. No, I, I don't. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and, and Kelly, I'm sure you can relate to that because you're probably sitting there going, like, I'm paying stuff that's ridiculous. And my friends that are down south are like laughing at me when I tell them what I'm paying. If you're bold enough to tell them what you're paying. Oh yeah, it's like sometimes like my friends who live who I'm very close to, they know like you know how much I pay and whatever, and they're just like, yeah, you cannot, you can't give it up. You can't. <laughs> yeah, because it just seems like this whole gentrification thing is just sweeping the nation by storm. It's even impacting little small places like Kernersville. I imagine there's some places, Trey, that are even in Kernersville, Winston-Salem area that are probably ridiculously priced compared to what you're getting. I, I do mystery shops, and I did one in an apartment a couple of months ago, and it was 1200 Okay, let me rephrase that. I pay nine hundred fifty six dollars a month for my house and I, I'm buying it that covers insurance and the payment. So I went and looked at a two bedroom to do the mystery shop and it was twelve hundred dollars. I'm like, how I left there going, How do people live? And I'm a teacher, I can retire, so I'm at the you know, I'm making a fairly I'm making great money as a teacher in North Carolina, I mean, some people wouldn't think it's that great, but I think it's awesome. So I'm just like $1,200. That's what I would pay in rent, water, and power. And maybe including cable and internet. So I'm just like, how, how is some of the doing it? And yeah, it's, a, it, it's crazy. Yeah, it's a mystery how some folks are doing it. Uh, we got about uh, 10 or 12 more minutes to go and everything. But I did, when I invited both of you, so I'm going to get to this and everything and uh, wrap it up and everything. But I'm going to start with, uh, I'll start with Kelly. So, Kelly, if somebody wanted to find the top three movies that they should see this particular year that they might not have seen, it could have been one that was nominated. It could have been something that you know about that folks don't know about. It's just showing in New York. But the top three movies that folks need to see. Uh, what would you say those movies are that are should be on everybody's wish list to go see if they haven't seen it already? Um, definitely Widows with Viola Davis, Brian Tyree Henry, um, Daniel Kaluuya, uh, directed by Steve McQueen. I think it was one of my favorite movies of last year. Um, Crazy Rich Asians, which was snubbed out of the Oscars, and I'm completely disgusted by it, was one of the best movies of 2018. I cannot believe that it was not nominated for anything. At all. And then, I don't know, what's another movie? What about, can I give you an upcoming movie that I think everyone Yeah, thinking? you can g- give me an upcoming movie for sure. Um, I think I'm, t- I'm torn between us, which is going to be directed by Jordan Peele, starring with Pizza and Winston Duke, or Ma, which is another horror movie, um, and it's starring Octavia Spencer. So those are two that I'm really looking forward to this year. Cool. And Ingrid, if so, if somebody was to tell you and they wanted to know the four, well, I'm gonna give you a, a two part question. Two places in okay. North America that people absolutely must go to, and th- two or three places worldwide that you figure everybody should go travel to. Of course, you got to get your passport, which is in my big dilemma. But in the two places <laughs> nationally and uh, 
worldwide that you figure everybody should go to? Nationally, two places. Uh huh. Okay. Um, one of them is Louisiana because all good things started in Louisiana. It's a really, I mean, it's one of the oldest cities, but it is so rich in like history, culture, but it's also, there's so much to learn just about everyone because um, just like New York, there's 150 languages like spoken and you get a taste of the world and a flavor without being so um, overwhelmed. Like New York can be very overwhelming to some people. And of course, I mean, I can't be, I'm, I'm biased from New York. Of course you have to come. I mean, New York is like one of those places that everyone should experience. I think that was my second choice. But if I, um, outside of New York, um, if there is um, a place, of course, that is um, that does have the skiing and the surfing in one place, California. Oh, yeah. And what about three places, I mean, three well, places worldwide, worldwide? Three places um Greece. Uh, Greece is right now um, inexpensive, yet it is one of the most um, idyllic places I've ever visited. Um, Sardinia um, in Italy and in the Amalfi Coast in Positano. That whole area is just um, really the most, um, it, it takes your breath away. Oh, well. Uh, as far as your New York story, one story that I've shared on this uh, podcast before, which is my experience with New York. I actually love New York. I consider it almost like a second home when I can get up there, but I've not been up there enough recently. And I also love uh, the Miami area. I went for the first time ever to Las Vegas uh, not that long ago, like over the Christmas, uh, New Year's area and everything. Did not hit the strip that much, but did hit that area and still need to do some more West Coast traveling because before that I had not been anywhere west of the Mississippi. But I had a cousin that lived in Asbury Park and I've always been in the entertainment and stuff like that. I knew I wanted to go to New York to see some friends that are actresses and actors and other people. He basically looked at me like, that's all right. You go over there and you have a good time. I'm good where I'm at. I'm not going anywhere but here. He was a Duke graduate, and he was not trying to go to New York to save his life. So he was not a big New York person. He now lives in uh, the Atlanta area, but at, and well, between Atlanta and D.C. But at the time, he was not feeling New York, and I was like, look, I think I was probably – maybe around your age, Kelly, maybe in, or maybe a little bit younger, somewhere between 20s and 30s, and I'm like, I'm heading over there, and I don't care what you say. I'm going to enjoy myself, and definitely had a good time while I was there. So I am definitely a big fan of New York, even though I've not been there in a while, but I need to get back over there. I wanted to see Dean and just to hang out in general, but I have uh, not had that pleasure yet of getting back to the New York, New Jersey area since going to a – political conference. I think that was maybe five or six years ago. We, it was right after whenever that flood was that watched out y'all of the, um, Sandy. what was the big? Sandy. 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 Right. It was right after Sandy. So whatever year that was. So it's been, it's been a minute. So I definitely need to get back over there and enjoy some of that stuff. Um, Trey, before we get off of here, uh, we got time for you to give one of your motivational minutes. So why don't you share a motivational minute with us? If you would right away, what do you want me to talk about? Hold on one second. Let me look at uh, because I posted something to myself. Hold on one second. Let me find it. Uh, One of the things that I've gotten from, well, here would actually be one. Are you better or better? And this is how I do it. This is how this thing is. It's Wayne Adams with another motivational minute. And today I want to talk about are you better or better? Too many times we're focused on what everybody else is doing. We're focused on what's not working right in our life. We're focused on everything that's wrong. Why are we being bitter? We need to focus on what we need to do to become better. We need to focus on the positive things that are going on in our life. We need to focus on things that we can control and not worry about what others think, not worry about what others do. We just need to focus on what we need to do to become a positive person, or what I call a P2D3. And I don't know if that was under a minute or not, because I don't have my daughter looking at me not when you have my 45 seconds. So 
Now, um, I think it was right in I think it was right in about a minute or a minute and a half, and I greatly appreciate it and things of that nature. Um, Ingrid, uh, one other quick question, yeah. and I also want you to give whatever your thought of the day is, and I'm going to do the same thing with Kelly, and if we got time, we make it to Dean and me. But uh, you did the whole bottling thing, so is there one particular or two particular designers that we should be looking at if we're trying to buy some clothes and got at least maybe a little bit of a budget, but not – too expensive. We don't. I don't think anybody on our show can afford the really high end stuff. But there's some designers that's got some good, affordable stuff that we should be looking at. Um, I would say, wow. Um, there's Alice and Olivia. Is um, there's definitely a classic. Um, it's not fast fashion that she creates. She creates the long-lasting fashion. That's a good investment, but it's not that crazy expensive. Um, so she's one of the, um, I mean, that's like one of my favorite, you know, classic uh, young designers and love Shaq Fancy for dresses. Okay, cool. Um, it's, they're beautiful, for, affordable, and you they're timeless, fun Dresses that are timeless pieces. So cool. appreciate you. Good quality. All right, and um, for both of you, both you and Kelly, we'll start with you. Well, actually, we'll start with Kelly since you just did that, and then I'll come back to you. But Kelly, uh, what kind of uh, words of wisdom as a young, uh, soon to be, uh, well, actually already podcaster, but words, words of wisdom just in general, do you have to share with our audience? Oh gosh, I wasn't ready for that kind of question. Um, I think what's really speaking to me right now is to not hold yourself back. Just, you know, the worst thing that can happen is that, you know, it doesn't work out the way you want it to, but just, you know, reroute yourself. It's not a failure. You just have to, you know, do a little bit more work. So, you know, just do it. Don't be, don't be afraid to fail. Just go and do it. Exactly. And Ingrid, what words of wisdom do you have to share with people? Um, the power of I am. Be careful when whatever I am, when you say it follows you, and it's almost like placing an order to the universe. Like, you know, if you say I am not a morning person, <laughs> it will follow you. You will become that. So be wisely when you choose that word I am. Yeah, that's very much a powerful word. And you're right. Oftentimes we wind up saying I am this or I am that, and we wind up getting locked into things that we really are not. So we do have to be careful about what we put out into the universe. There's no doubt about that. Trey, you got another minute or so. What words of wisdom do you have to share with our audience? My biggest thing is to piggyback on what she said. Um, it's exactly right. What you, you've met, you'll be amazed at how we manifest negativity just in our thoughts and in our actions. And you've got to have them positively. And thoughts, yeah. words, I and just got to stay positive no matter what. I I am going to become this. And one of the things I do when we we start our school day with the kids in the cafeteria is we do I can, I will, I must. I can get better, I will get better, I must get better. And we start that every morning with here's what we're going to do. And our mascot's a bear, and and I ask them, I said, why are we going to do this? And they say, because bears handle it. And it just it starts my day off right. It starts their day off right. They're pumped. They're primed. They're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, definitely. Gotta, we got to start those days. Yep, got to start those days off right. There's no doubt about that. One thing I do want to say to all of three of you and Krista, who's gone, but I'm sure there's a uh, – Dean will relay the message to her is I loved all of y'all's conversation and do know that as part of the Straight Talk family, y'all are always welcome to come back. Uh, if there's something breaking in the movie world that you want to share with our audience, Kelly, please come back any uh, money that you feel like it. Same thing with you, Ingrid. If there's something jumping off in Thank the fashion you. world, uh, you are always welcome. I was glad that I met you through Instagram and you were both always welcome to come back and we would love to have a motivational minute or two every once in a while from you as well, Trey. So uh, all of you are welcome to come back, and Crystal also, because we definitely have enjoyed what all of you have said. And next week, you know, speaking of I Am, I'm worried about the I Am that we have next week, and I still have to get in touch with them. But on March 4th, we have some listeners that are going to be, I mean, some 
people that are going to be coming onto the show that are of the belief that uh, the world is in its ending time.